What's up guys? I'm out in the field today just kind of doing a, a walk through here mid-October so I want to see how much grass is out here yet. Good grazable grass. Um, there's a lot of weeds I can tell you that but for those of you that don't know I bought this property about two years ago. Uh, we got animals on it last summer uh, so there's probably been animals on it for 16 months roughly. Uh, we're working on getting it all whipped back into shape. Before we bought it, it was all cropped for years and years and years, and it was all rented crop land, and I don't think there was a very good um, management program involved in it. I think it was just kind of put whatever the corn needed to survive, and that's all we're doing. I could be wrong, but based on what was here when I bought it, that that's the way things pointed. So we didn't have much for soil here. I mean, it was pretty much dirt. Um, weeds, that's about it. Not good weeds either, just dirt and bad, ugly weeds. A lot of burning nettle and uh, stuff like that. So, with routine mowing and uh, grazing out here and everything, we're trying to get it all whipped back into shape. It's taken a lot to do. Last winter, I just fed on a bale ring, and then I moved the bale ring around. That was... I didn't like it, but that, that's all I had. You know, I was doing working on 700 other things coming into winter, so that's what I had to do. Uh, this year, though, I'd like to spread my hay out more as I feed it. And a lot of people like to roll their hay out. The problem with me doing that is, first off, I don't have a big enough herd to roll out a full bale. So, I can't really do that uh, without having a lot of waste. The other problem here is I work a full-time day job and our shifts are 12 hours. Now those 12 hour shifts can very easily turn into 13 or 14 hours before I get home with drive time and maybe clocking out a little bit late, chit-chatting in the parking lot, whatever. So by the time I get home in the middle of winter, it's already been dark for three, four hours, and uh, not only do I not want to go outside and do it, but sometimes I just simply don't have the time to go outside and roll out hay. So that was out of the options. Now, like I said, last year I moved around a bale ring. That also not ideal. Uh, you have a lot of waste with the hay sitting on the ground, and um, you know, you kind of got to wait until the bale is completely gone before you move the bale ring, otherwise anything that's left will go to waste as well. I'm not a fan of that either. So this year, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is build a hay ring on sleds, or on a sled. That way, it can all be up off the ground, I can drag it around as needed, with the hay on there, it'll naturally spread the manure in the fields here. And the biggest thing, it'll naturally reseed with good quality hay seed. So that's what we're going to work on today. Hopefully we'll get it done before the snow flies. The snow shouldn't come for another month, so I think we'll be good, but we'll find out. What's up guys? Like I said, wanted to come up with a way to keep the hay up off the ground, something I could move around that was mobile, and uh, ideally throw a roof on it so it's covered too. So <clears throat> I got kind of a plan. Uh, I threw something together, kitchen table, a couple mornings ago uh, while I was eating breakfast, and then I ran to Menards, got all the material with my girlfriend. Anyways. Got all the material, got a truckload of wood, kind of got a game plan. We're going to kind of go desi decide as we go. Hard to really tell what size I want this until I get it into out and laid out in perspective. I'm thinking I'm going to do eight foot by six foot to put my bales in. That way if I get, you know, five by six bales, they'll still fit. Um, right now I got four by fours. But that way if we get bigger bales, you know, there's a little bit of flexibility. We feed primarily larger animals here. So I'm not concerned if there's, you know, six, eight inches of dead spot there because, um, you know, an 
800, 900 pound steer can still reach through and get it. It's not like it's going to be a calf that won't be able to reach in if I put a smaller male in. So that being said, we're going to get after it and see what we can come up with and try and build. What's up guys? It uh, ended up starting to rain a little bit more than I wanted to deal with and it got pretty cold last night too so I ended up walking away from the project for a while. <clears throat> I'm back out here this morning. It's I don't know, 7 or 8 o'clock this morning. Still pretty damn cold out. It's crazy to think I, I was working on a t-shirt yesterday and now it's I think it's like 31 or something. I don't know. Not warm I'll tell you that for free. Anyways, with the wind and everything, it got difficult to keep videoing, but this is where we're at. Oh, how do I flip you around? Hmm. So this is where we're at. I got it all set up here. Um, got the skid centered, or, you know, the middle skid centered. Everything screwed down. All these, I ended up going with a little bit of an overhang on each end. This is going to be the gate side, so this is the side that I focused on making straight. These boards are plus or minus a quarter inch or so on my cut in half, or when I cut them in half, so that's just from the manufacturing difference of 12 and a half foot versus 12 foot 3 eighths or whatever, um, or 12 foot 12 and 1 half inch or 12 and 3 eighths inch or, you know, they, they add that little bit extra on. So I, I tried to cut them at six and a quarter, and this is just a little bit of a difference we ended up with. But this is all going to be covered, so that's fine. So that's where we're at, and uh, I notched out my four by fours. I'm gonna, I gotta run back to the storage unit, aka my dad's shed, to get a few more uh, four by fours here. Um, but we got those all notched out, and then we're gonna get those mounted on here. <clears throat>
Okay guys, she's all done. Uh, it's not quite to its final resting spot, but uh, I just got it sitting out here in the pasture here. But it seems to tow pretty easy with the little eight on, I'm happy. I do figure probably when I go to move it in the field, if I just have the skid steer, more than likely I'll just push it you know, up against this side with the uh, hay bale on, and just push it where I want to push it. Um, that's probably what I'll end up doing. Same thing with the tractor, I'll just back into it and push it in reverse uh, if needed. When I go to go to fill it, that's probably will be the easiest thing, but I did put these little hooks on just for the event of when I want to move it with, say, the eight on, or you know, if I don't have a bale on, I just want to grab a chain and pull it, pull it somewhere. But uh, but uh, overall, it worked pretty good. We'll see how, or pulls pretty good, I guess. Nothing fell apart. We'll see how it works when we get it out into the field. You guys let me know what your thoughts are on it, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.